all right so quickly here this is breaking down the the comp here which actually was uh fairly simple wasn't too bad at all um a very basic comp here inside of davinci resolve i work from top to bottom which is basically what they do in nuke and all the hollywood studios they work top to bottom and then bring in your elements from left to right so i try to keep that practice going um it's just a good habit to practice so here we start with the video and then you want to keep all your main pipes down and then everything that comes in is going to come here from off the side so you can see all my greens are coming in all my oranges are staying out so here's my main pipe which i'm keeping all the way down to the bottom this is my output and the first thing uh this is a tracker here but we'll come back to that later so i have this merge node the first thing i brought in was the shadow layer here which you can see there's the shadow matter of fact let me go ahead and just mute this here and i'll bring it in frame by frame I'll zoom in a little bit tighter there so we can see here's my video layer i added this planar tracker which i ended up using here to track my uh my little logo there on the background there just super easy but that's um something we'll get here shortly so the first thing in the pipeline i brought in my shadow and then you can see my shadow here down on the floor there's the shadow and then what i brought in here was a curves a color curves adjustment let me go ahead and turn all these off control p and basically here i'm just adjusting the colors of the shadows to try to get them man it's getting super dark in here uh basically these are just to color correct the shadows to get the shadows to match up a lot more better with the plate boom so there's that adjustment i did there again i added two color corrects a blur node and some film grain on top of that and this last color correction was me animating that where the light where the lens flare hit it i animated all the the gammas i bumped them up and then bumped them back down just to try to to kind of make it blown out and then after that i added in my i technically added in my rgb layer rgb a layer and control p to bring him back so then that brings him in and then again he was super you know crunchy and bright and high saturated coming from blender from the perfect world of blender and what I typically like to do is I bring in a special color correct here at the bottom of the pipeline. And let me undo that. And like, I literally just crank up the saturation just to see how off he is. Like he is so bright compared to everything else in the scene. So this just allows me to kind of like, okay, I need to bring him down a lot, right? And uh, that's a little thing that I like to do just to help. I learned, I learned from a new tutorial about how to, to match stuff better, especially wise brightness and, and you know, your luminances and colors. And then after that, I started doing some of these one by one, started making adjustments like the, sh the black points. And then I do the white points. And then I added a little bit of a blur on top of him. And then I added some film grain on top of him. And then my final color correction there to animate when he uh, gets blown out in the light from the lens flare. And honestly, I think I could have did a little bit better on that. Like he's a little bit too much. Like I went too hard on that. See this edge here? It's like more brighter than this. So, but hey, that's the whole point of doing these tutorials, uh, these exercises to learn. Like, so next time I'm going to bring him down just a little bit more. That brought all that in. And then I did the planar track here in the background just to track my name on the wall there. And again, these two are noise, fast noise. So let me mute those. And that was just because this was a text. I literally like, here's the text. And I come in here. It's a text that I found on top. Uh, it's called a tag, te another tag that I got from a uh, text detector or some free text uh, website. Brought that text in here. And of course, it looks too perfect. So lighten it up, try to find a color that I like. Then I added this noise onto it to just kind of uh, break it up a little bit. And then I added a second noise pattern on it, a big one and a small one to just kind of break that up. So it looks like it's, you know, kind of faded tag on the wall there. And then when I made this planar track, this is the track result. And I, I just dropped that in there and it makes it connected to the wall. And then boom, that's how we got it done all in. Like I said, the whole process took about an hour and a half, an hour and 50 minutes. And then render time um, probably took another hour. So almost like a three hour project, but uh, it was fun. Uh, and again, just rinse, repeat. I'm going to be doing it again. Matter of fact, as soon as I finish this video here, I already shot another HDR outside and another spot that I want to do. And I'm going to probably do the same thing again, dancing guy with some type of stuff hanging off of his body, maybe some falling off or maybe just a static object. It depends on how much time I have, if I have enough time to do tracking and all that stuff. So hope you guys enjoyed these little breakdowns. Let me know if you guys want more of these or what else you would like to see. Uh, again, this is your channel as much as it is my channel because I'm showing stuff that hopefully somebody out there might learn or grab a few ticks from <laughs> Keep Rendering. Patrick LeVar, catch you guys in the next one. Peace.